Kubernetes and containers have solved a lot of problems. The technology has helped us build portable, immutable cloud native applications. But for many folks, it's introduced a huge barrier to entry like working with terminals, complicated YAML files, API contracts, command line interfaces, and having to learn commands. Now, adopting containers and orchestrators can introduce a steep learning curve. And for some people, it can introduce pitfalls. So how do we simplify it? Portainer is a centralized service that allows you to manage containerized apps. We simply run Portainer. It gives us a user interface to manage local containers. We can also run Portainer as a server, plug agents into all our environments, whether it's Azure AKS, Docker virtual machines, a swarm cluster, or a Kubernetes cluster, even on-prem. It simplifies the management of these container environments. Today we dive into Portainer. Portainer eases the pain and burden of managing containers as well as container orchestrated environments. And it achieves this by reducing the need for command line interfaces, terminals and YAML files. Portainer helps people manage containers not only on their local, but also in cloud environments. Even for the enterprise folks that want to manage containers and large teams at scale. So today I've got a lot of fancy stuff to show you guys, so without further ado let's go So if we take a look at my GitHub repo, I have a Kubernetes folder. And in the Kubernetes folder, I have a Portainer folder with a readme. And this is our introduction to Portainer, where we're gonna be taking a look at the documentation, the architecture. We're gonna look at how to install and run Portainer, manage containers locally, as well as managing Kubernetes environments in the cloud. We'll take a look at how Portainer interfaces with all these containers, Helm charts, as well as a full GitOps pipeline. So be sure to check out the links down below to the source code so you can follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the documentation. If we go to portainer.io and we go to resources, we can open up the documentation. So when we get to the documentation, we've got two editions of Portainer, the community edition and the business edition. Both these edition comes jam packed with features with the business edition providing several convenience options and focuses a little bit more on compliance and security when managing large teams at scale. So if we dive into the Portainer community edition, the documentation flows really well from top to bottom. We go to the introduction and from the introduction, we dive into the Portainer architecture. Now for the architecture, the first thing we need to do is deploy a Portainer server. It's our central point of operations. Portainer runs in a container and can run on a virtual machine or in a Kubernetes cluster. For developers, Portainer is great because it gives you a UI to manage all your local Docker containers, images, volumes, and more. So you don't need the command line. For operations, you can even use it to manage local or private environments by deploying the Portainer agent. The agent can run on Docker machines if you want to run containers but not worry about Kubernetes, or it can run on Docker swarm clusters or Kubernetes clusters. In local private networks, Portainer can talk to agents using either an ingress, service type load balancer or node port. This is okay for isolated private networks where Portainer agent is not public. For production environments on public networks, Portainer provides an edge agent. So you can manage Docker containers on virtual machines, Docker swarm clusters, or Kubernetes clusters. The edge agent allows you to change the direction of communication via a tunnel, so the edge agent is not public. So Portainer has two types of agent, the agent and the edge agent. Now, as I mentioned, if you're running local networks or local Kubernetes clusters or Docker machines where Portainer agents won't be public, you can run the default agent. But if you're running Docker machines or Kubernetes clusters in the cloud where Portainer will have a public endpoint, we'll use the edge agent. And next up, we'll take a look at requirements and prerequisites. So Portainer also comes with a compatibility matrix, which tells you which version of Portainer has been tested with which 
Switch version of Docker and Kubernetes. Now there's a few things to note here. The Docker version support is only for Docker machines that you want to manage. If you're someone that's not ready for Kubernetes and managing Kubernetes clusters and you're deploying Docker machines, you would want to make sure your Docker version falls into this category. If you're managing Kubernetes clusters in the cloud, you'll want to make sure your Kubernetes version is compatible with Portainer. We know new versions of Kubernetes uses Container D and Portainer runs perfectly fine managing Kubernetes where Container D is used. In this demo, I'll take a look at a local Kubernetes as well as a cloud-based Kubernetes cluster of 1.22. And I'll be taking a look at the Portainer version Community Edition 2.11.1. The other bit that's important is persistent storage. When we run Portainer, we wanna make sure we persist the data folder of the Portainer server. Now there's a few important ports to notice. The Portainer server listens on port 9443. So this is for the UI and the API. Portainer also needs to open up port 8000 as a tunnel so that the edge agents can talk back to the Portainer server. And then we dive into the install part of the documentation. And here we can do a few things. We can add an existing environment to an existing installation, or we can go and set up a new Portainer server install. And this is very simple. You can either run Portainer in an existing Kubernetes cluster, a Docker Swarm cluster, or just on a Docker machine. I'm gonna take a look at the Docker standalone version. And here it gives you several options like running Docker on Linux, WSL, Docker Desktop, or on Windows Container Service. And to run Portainer, it's extremely simple. All we need to do is create that volume and then do a Docker run command where we expose the ports, we mount in the Docker sock if we want to manage local containers, and we mount in our volume to persist that data. So if we jump back to my documentation, I've got all the steps here so you can follow along. I change directory to the Kubernetes Portainer folder. If I run that, I'm in the folder and I'm gonna create a folder where I'm gonna hold all my data. I'm gonna mount this in as a volume. So I create a folder called volume-ce, where ce stands for community edition. That'll create a folder on the left. And then I'm gonna run Portainer by saying docker run minus D to run it in background mode. I'm gonna expose the port for the UI and API. I'm gonna expose the port for the tunneling so the edge agents can talk back to Portainer. I'm gonna call my Portainer, Portainer CE, restart always. I'm gonna mount in the Docker sock so that I can manage local containers on my machine. I'm gonna mount in that volume to persist data and I'm gonna run Portainer CE 2.11.1. I'm gonna copy this command, paste it to the terminal and that'll go ahead and run Portainer. If we open up HTTPS localhost 9443, we'll get to the setup page where we can set up our initial user. We can go ahead and create that user and we get to the quick setup wizard. Here we can say get started to manage the environment where this Portainer machine is running. We can also add other environments to Portainer. So the first thing I can do is say get started with this environment and we can see now we can manage our local environment. So here we have all the containers that are running on the machine. I can go ahead and click into this environment and we can see we have two stacks. These are Docker Compose stacks, nine containers, 221 images, we got volumes and and networks. I can go into the environment page. I can see all my environments here. So this is my local Docker environment. And if I go to the dashboard, I can now manage this environment. And Portainer gives us a lot of options for managing containers. We can go into stacks and this gives us the equivalent of Docker Compose. So if we go add new stack, we can add a Compose file via the web editor. We can upload it from our computer. We can even point it to a Git repo or a custom template. You can see I have an existing Docker Compose stack. If I click into it, I can see all the associated containers. I can see their IP addresses as well as ports exposed. I can also manage local containers. You can see here, we can see the Portainer server that's running. We can see all containers that are stopped. We can see their IP addresses as well as ports exposed. And this allows us to start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, and remove containers. We can also go ahead and add containers. The other cool bit is we can manage Docker images on our machine without using the Docker CLI. So here we can add a Docker registry, we can pull images, we can even go ahead and clean up images that are unused. So you can see I have a bunch of images here that are unused. I can click them and I can say remove. I can also use the image builder to build a new image. So if I click into that, I can again use the web editor to 
define a Docker file. I can upload one or specify a URL and give it an image name and it will go ahead and build the image. On the left here, we have networks where we can fully manage container local networks. We can add a network. We have volumes, so we can go ahead and add volumes. We can manage existing volumes. So the equivalent of using the CLI, we can do everything in the interface. We can also manage container registries. So if we click into that, we can see that Docker Hub is the default. We can go ahead and add new registries. And to see how simple it is, I can go to containers, go to add container. I can create a new container. Let's call it Nginx. I can tell it the registry to pull from, and I'm just going to pull Nginx container. Say so always pull the image. I can set up a port that I want to publish. So we know Nginx uses port 80. I'm going to expose that to the container. I'm going to tell Portainer to auto remove the container when it stops. And here you can see I can do a lot of advanced things. I can set up logging, entry point, working directories, custom users, the logging driver. I can go to volumes. I can set up a custom volume. I can set up a network where I want Nginx to run on. I can give it environment variables. I can give it labels. I can set a restart policy, like whether it needs to restart. I have full control of runtime resources like memory, memory limits, CPU limits, and container capabilities. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and deploy that container. Now with that container running, let's see what we can do. We can see the container here called Nginx. It's in a running status. We have a bunch of quick actions here. So I can immediately take a look at the logs of the Nginx container. I can follow these logs as well as download them. I can inspect. This is the same thing as Docker inspect command, which gives you a lot of the metadata of the container. I can go into stats so I can see the memory usage, CPU usage, network usage, and IO usage of this container. I can also see the processes inside of the container. I can also exec into the container and actually get a console. So if I click into this, I know bin bash is not available. So I'm going to say bin sh and I'm going to say connect. And now I'm inside of that container. We can see if I do ls minus l, we can see the file system. I can then hit disconnect. And it also gives us a link to that container. If I click into this, we can access that container over localhost port 80. And this is the Nginx that we've just launched. And if I click into this container, I can see a lot of things like the container status. I can create an image from this running container. I can see all the container details, the ports exposed, the entry points, the environment variables, and what network it's connected to. I can also jump into the logs, inspect, stats, console, and I can attach to the console here. It also gives me a lot of actions like starting, stopping, killing the container, restarting it, pausing it, resuming it, and removing it. Let's go ahead and remove this container because we're now done. I can say I want to remove any non-persistent volumes and this container has been removed. So you can see Portainer greatly improves the user experience for managing local containers. You can do everything via the user interface. But what about staging and production environments? What about environments like Kubernetes? Now, if we click on environments, we get to the environment page and here we can go ahead and add an environment. And this page is for folks that want to run a central Portainer server and then manage their cloud environments. So Portainer supports a number of ways to manage environments. It supports Azure for Azure container instances, local Kubernetes clusters. We can connect to containers where we have Docker installed on VMs. We can use the edge agents as well as the Portainer default agent. Now you can connect to any Kubernetes cluster using the Portainer agent or the Edge agent. Now Portainer can connect to its agent by either using a service type load balancer, a node port service, or an ingress. The Portainer agent requires an accessible IP address, which you don't want to expose to the public. So the Portainer agent is great for isolated networks like local or test, or an isolated private cloud, because we don't want to expose the Portainer agent directly to the public. For production use, I would recommend the Portainer Edge agent, which uses a tunnel to talk back to the Portainer server, making it a lot more secure. So let's go ahead and deploy a local Kubernetes cluster for testing with the Portainer agent and then a cloud-based cluster and use the Portainer Edge agent. <laughs> 
So for a local Kubernetes cluster, I'm going to use a product called Kind. Kind is great for running local Kubernetes clusters in Docker containers that we can use for testing. So because Kind doesn't have load balancer support, I'm going to showcase the Portainer agent using the node port. So if we take a look at my Kubernetes Portainer folder, I have a kind.yaml. And in the kind.yaml, I define my local cluster. I have one master node and a worker node. And I'm going to expose container port 30778 as a local local node port. To create this cluster, it's really simple. I'm going to say kind create cluster. I'm going to call it local and I'm going to pass in the kind.yaml. Copy this to the terminal and we can see it's now provisioning a local Kubernetes cluster. And then I can do kubectl get nodes and we can see our cluster is up and running ready to go. So how do we manage this Kubernetes cluster in Portainer? Now that is very simple because my Kubernetes cluster is running in an isolated network, I'm going to use the Portainer agent. And I know I'm running running kind so I don't have Kubernetes load balancer support so I'm going to use node port and Portainer gives us this command that we can go and run to attach the Kubernetes cluster to Portainer. So let's take a look at what it's installing. We can see we have a YAML file over here. If I copy and paste this in the browser it'll go ahead and download that YAML and I've downloaded this YAML into this folder so that you can have a look. And when we take a look at it, we can see how lightweight Portainer is. It's going to create a namespace. It creates a service account to manage your cluster. It creates a cluster role binding for that service account. It creates a service to expose Portainer. We can see we're using node ports in this instance. And then we have a lightweight deployment. And the deployment is running the Portainer agent to 11.1. It exposes a few environment variables variables and that is pretty much it. So to add the agent to my local kind cluster, I'm going to say kubectl apply, and I'm going to apply that YAML file. Go ahead and do that. We can see it's created the Portainer namespace, the service account, the role binding, the service, as well as the deployment. Now in this environment page, we can go ahead and fill out and describe this environment. So, so I'm going to give this environment a name. I'm going to call it local K8S because it's my local Kubernetes environment. And I'm going to give the environment URL. So it's the IP address of my my local machine, the private IP and the node port that we exposed Portainer on. So this will use that node port to talk to the Portainer agent and then my public IP for this environment, which I'm just going to put the private IP of my local Kubernetes cluster. I go ahead and add the environment. And this is where Portainer is great because it allows me to set up some basic configuration for this environment. So I can do things like allow users to create an external load balancer. And since we know Kind doesn't support a load balancer, we can turn this off. If we're running in the cloud, we can turn it on. If we want our users to be able to create load balancers, we can configure an existing ingress controller. I can restrict access to the default namespace to make sure people and teams are using their own namespaces. I can enable features like the metrics API to get stats for the Kubernetes cluster. And I can also configure available storage options. So in kind, we have standard node local storage, which I can turn on and off. And we can see the Business Edition provides some convenience options like allowing for change windows when automatic updates can occur in the environment, resource over commit so we can allow people to use more resources than what's physically available in the cluster. And then we can go ahead and save that configuration. And now we have our local Kubernetes cluster attached to Portainer. Now for adding something like an Azure or EKS or cloud environment, we can go to our environments page, add an environment. And for environments where there's public endpoints, we want to use the edge agent. So I'm going to go ahead and select edge agent since I have a cluster in Azure. Now, when we run the server edge agent, the edge agent has to be able to connect back to our Portainer server and it uses a key to authenticate with the server. That means our Portainer server needs a public address. So we cannot use local host. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use nip.io to give myself a public DNS. So if you go to Google and find your public IP, address, you can then paste your public IP address in the browser followed by .nip.io. And then we can go ahead and access port 9443. And we can see now I have a public address for my Portainer server. So I can go ahead and log in. So now to add a cloud cluster, I can go to the environment page to the edge agent. I'm going to call my environment production. And here I can put my Portainer server URL. So I put my public DNS entry here. 
and a frequency that it will poll the Portainer server. So I go ahead and add environment, and this will bring me to the page which allows me to deploy an agent. It gives me the instructions on how to deploy this agent to my cloud cluster. And in here, we can turn on allow self-signed search since we are running a custom domain that doesn't have a valid SSL certificate. Portainer will use a self-signed certificate to connect the edge agent back to the Portainer server. If you want to bring your own certificate you can go to the settings page and upload your own SSL certificate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this command and in the terminal where I have a cube config that's pointing to my Azure cluster I'm going to go ahead and paste that command and what it's going to do is it's going to download a shell script which is going to pull down YAML file and apply it to my AKS cluster. We can see on the left here it's downloaded a YAML called the Portainer Agent Edge. If I go into that we can see what it's deployed and here again we can see how lightweight it is simply creates a namespace a service account a cluster role binding it creates a service but this time it's far more secure because it has a cluster IP none so there's no public endpoint for this Portainer agent it then places a deployment running the Portainer agent 2.11.1 it has a configuration on how to talk to Portainer and it has an edge key so it does a handshake with the Portainer server so then we can go and update that environment and now the Portainer Edge agent once it's up and running will talk back to the Portainer server authenticate and then we can start managing that cloud Kubernetes cluster and when that's done we can see now we have our production cluster ready to be managed now similarly to my kind cluster I can go ahead and configure this environment so I can allow users to create external load balances or I can turn this off I can configure an existing ingress controller I can restrict access to the default namespace but the cool one here is I can enable the metrics API so I'm going to enable this and this will work if you have Prometheus or if you have metrics server running in the cluster and in Azure Kubernetes it is always there so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on now the cool thing with Portain is when we run multiple Kubernetes clusters, we can centrally manage the access control to those clusters. So where you would traditionally distribute a cube config file for every cluster, you now only produce one cube config file that points to Portainer and Portainer will proxy to those Kubernetes clusters. This allows you to centrally manage the access to your environments. So as an administrator, I can go to settings and I can go to Kubernetes cube config expiry and I can set an expiry for my Kubernetes configs and then I can go ahead and save it. This means any user that logs into Portainer can download their own cube config file which will force expiry making it more secure and the permission for that cube config will be tied to the user that downloads that cube config file. We'll talk about users in a bit. Now the first noticeable feature is in my production cluster I can get a kubectl shell. So if I click into this, this will load a terminal within Portainer where I can access my Kubernetes cluster. So this allows me to run arbitrary kubectl commands within Portainer. And on the environment dashboard, I can then also see namespaces, configurations, volumes, and applications of that cluster. So I can go ahead and fully explore it through this dashboard. And on the left here, we can see we have access to namespaces. So if you want to create a namespace, it's very simple. I can go ahead and add a new namespace. I'm going to call this one Nginx Ingress. So I want to deploy an Ingress controller. And now I can also allow and set resource limits on that namespace. And then there are some convenient options for the business edition to provide things like load balancer quotas and storage quotas. So we have a little bit more granular control over each namespace. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the resource assignments and I'm going to create namespace. This will create a new Nginx Ingress namespace that I can use. Now, if you're already using Kubernetes, you're probably wondering how you can deploy Helm charts. Now, Portainer comes with a fully fledged Helm interface. If I click into this, we can add Helm repositories to our Portainer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a popular Ingress controller Helm chart. I'm going to paste in the URL to that Helm repo and I'm going to click add and now we can see we've successfully added that helm repository and all the charts will come up in this list so i can go ahead and click on this helm chart and this allows me to deploy the helm chart to my cluster so i can specify a namespace i want to deploy it to so i'm going to 
click Nginx Ingress and I'm going to pass in a name called Nginx Ingress and it also allows you to override custom values. So you can override the values file for this Helm chart and I'm simply going to leave it as the default and I'm going to go ahead and click install. So that'll go ahead and deploy the Helm chart and if we go over to applications we can now see that we have an Nginx Ingress controller being deployed by Helm. If we click into that we can then click into the application and we can see the namespace it's running in, the number of pods, resource reservations, we can scroll down, we can see load balancer, it's got a load balancer with an external IP, exposing port 80 and 443, it has the configuration, any sort of data persistence that might be added, and you can see here's a pod that is currently running. And the cool thing is because I enabled the metrics API, I have a stats action here, and I get to the stats page where we can see memory usage and CPU usage of all our pods that are running. I can also click on the logs action and I can see the logs of the ingress controller. I can also auto refresh as well as download the logs. And the other cool thing similar to docker exec, I can attach a console to that pod. If I click into that, I can give it the command I want to execute and say connect. And now I'm inside the ingress controller. I can do ls minus l, we can see the file system. The other cool thing is that we can manage configs and secrets. If I click into this, we can see configurations in different namespaces. We can also add a configuration or a secret with the form from a UI or from a YAML manifest. I can also click into volumes and we can create volumes from manifests as well. But here we can see volumes available to the cluster as well as storage classes. So you can see that Portainer is well equipped for not only managing containers in a Docker environment, but also a Kubernetes environment locally as well as in the cloud. But it doesn't end there. What about CICD? Now Portainer gels very well with GitOps, meaning if you have a bunch of microservices and you have YAML manifests for those services, and let's say you have a CI server like GitHub Actions or Jenkins that goes and builds and tests your containers, and you store those YAML manifests in a Git repo, Portainer allows you to keep your clusters in sync with a Git repo. So GitOps is the concept where you store all your infrastructure as code and the state of your infrastructure in Git. So as you can see in my Git repo under Portainer, I have an example application and here I have the YAML manifest for a microservice. So you can see I have a config map that contains a configuration file for my service. I have a deployment and in this deployment, I'm running a simple small Python application. So you can see I have an image for Python. I expose a port. I set some resource limits and requests. I mount in the volume for the configuration I showed earlier. I then have a service.yaml where I expose this application. And this is a cluster IP private service because I don't want to make the service itself public. It binds port 80 to the container port. And to make this application public, I want to use my ingress controllers. So I have an ingress.yaml over here. And this is a simple ingress that we just call example ingress. We expose a DNS. So all traffic coming to this DNS name to the path slash hello will be routed to my microservice. So this is a common way to expose microservices in Kubernetes. Now, generally folks will have a CI server like GitHub Actions, Jenkins, or some other kind of build server where they go ahead and run Docker build. They'll do things like unit tests. And then once they have an image number, they'll commit it to a Git repo. But how do they go ahead and deploy this YAML file? This is where Portainer helps us seamlessly set up a GitOps pipeline. So in my production environment, I can go ahead to applications. I can then say, I want to create an application from a manifest. And the first thing I want to do is select the namespace where I want that application deployed. So I'm going to select an example app namespace that I created. I'm going to give my application an, a name called example app. And this is the GitOps setting. So what I do is I say a Git repository where my YAML files are located. And what I want to do is I want to select a repository URL. And here I'm going to paste in the URL to my Git repository where the YAML file lives. And here we can set up a branch where to look at. In this example, I'm going to point to the Portainer branch. And here we have to set the manifest path that Portainer will monitor. So in my example, in my GitHub repo, I have a few paths that I want Portainer 
container to monitor. So under Kubernetes Portainer example app, we have a deployment.yaml. I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL. I'm going to add that as my main manifest, and then I'm going to add separate files. I'm going to add the config map. I'm going to add another file. I'm going to add the service.yaml and I'm going to add the ingress.yaml. I'm also going to say I want automatic updates. And when I turn this on, this will allow me to poll GitHub to set up polling. So I'm going to tell Portainer to poll every five minutes. Portainer will then monitor my Git repo and then make a deployment and keep my clusters in sync. So I go ahead and click deploy and that has gone ahead and created a GitOps pipeline, deployed our application to our environment. And as you can see under our application list, we now have our example deployment. It's running my Python application. Note that it's 1.0.3. If I click into that application, you can see a bunch of things, the namespace it's deployed to, the replica count. You can also see the service that's exposed. It doesn't have an external IP. However, it is exposed via an ingress. So we can see the ingress controller endpoint here. It also has a URL to it. So we can click into that. We can see we have two pods up and running. Because I don't have a node selector, one of the pods is obviously trying to schedule to a Windows node. And if I click into this pod, we can see we can collect logs from it. So our application is now up and running. And as a test, I've created a host file entry to my cluster and use the IP address of my Nginx ingress controller. And if I go back to applications, click into my new application and I click on the URL, I can successfully reach my application in the browser. So how do I make any changes to my application? This is where GitOps comes in. If I have a CI server like Jenkins or something else that does my container build and test, all that my CI server needs to do is change the version number of the Docker image in the YAML file. So if we've built a new Docker image, all that the CI server needs to do is on the deployment YAML file, change the version number of the Docker image. So what I'm going to do is bump this number up to version four. So as you can see here, we're changing version number from 103 to 104. I go ahead and update this in Git. So I do a commit and I go ahead and do a push. So I push that to GitHub and what will happen now now is Portainer will detect that there's a change in the YAML file and roll out the new deployment. And if we go back to Portainer and we refresh our application at the top here, if I scroll down, we can see a new pod is starting to roll out, which is Python 104. So it's automatically detected the change in Git and rolled out the new application. So you can see how seamlessly Portainer integrates with Git and helps us to set up a GitOps pipeline with very little friction. So as you can see, there's a ton of features on the Portainer Community Edition. But what about the Business Edition? As we saw earlier, the Business Edition provides a couple of convenience features. But where the Business Edition shines is when it comes to security and compliance for companies that want to manage large teams at scale and want to focus more on role-based access control. Companies also have different forms of authentication, so they might have existing authentication servers like Active Directory. Although you can hook this up with the Community Edition, the Business Edition makes it a lot more seamless as it provides simple integration. So if you want to check out the Business Edition, head over to Portainer slash pricing slash take five. And Portainer provides a license here for the Business Edition for five nodes that are always free. Now, if you look at the difference between Community and Business Edition, Community Edition can do almost everything that business can do. The only difference is Business Edition has a lot of convenience features that make it a little bit simpler for enterprise companies that operate at scale. But the part where the Business Edition really shines is around governance and security. So if we head back to Portainer and we go to Settings Authentication, we see that Portainer provides rich options for integrating different authentication methods. So it has built in internal username and password. It has LDAP, so you can bring your own LDAP server by providing and filling out all the settings. The Business Edition here allows you to bring your own Active Directory authentication. Although if you want to configure it manually, you can use the Community Edition and just use the LDAP feature. If we go to OAuth Authentication, you can see there's a bunch of different OAuth providers that Portainer allows you to configure. Now with the Community Edition, you can use the custom OAuth provider and you can set up the settings and integrate with any OAuth provider. The Business Edition makes it slightly simpler. It gives you the capability to integrate much 
easier. So if you click on Azure, you, all you need to provide is a tenant ID, application ID, and key. And then you have Google as well as GitHub authentication. The other feature is users. If we go to users and we go to teams, Portainer Community Edition allows you to create different teams, but the business edition allows you to manage roles. So you can bind roles to different teams. So you can see the business edition here allows you to create an environment administrator and operator and help this person read only as well as a standard user. Portainer also allows you to integrate with like something like Active Directory and then map you those Active Directory roles so that you don't have to manage users in Portainer. You can just continue to manage them in your Active Directory. So as you can see, Portainer provides a really neat and seamless integration with your container environments, not only Docker machines, but also Kubernetes clusters, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud. It makes the management sites also a lot easier because everything is done within Portainer as a centralized system via a user interface. So let us know down in the comments, how do you manage your production environments? How do you set up your build and GitOps pipelines? And also let me know down in the comments what sort of videos you'd like me to cover in the future. And as always, if you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. And if you want to support the channel even further, be sure to check the Patreon link down below or become a YouTube member. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.